In today's podcast, we'll be focusing on the topic, the three poisons of the mind that are tuned to hell, greed, anger, and foolishness, from chapter three, curses, spells, and possession. And we thought it would be a great idea to contemplate the three poisons of the mind through three short reflective meditations. Yes, Master Okawa says in this chapter, you do not need to ask a psychic or a spiritual expert to know where you will go after death. You will know it just by examining the life you are living. When we hear the word greed, our immediate reaction is, I know someone who is greedy, but I don't have it. I'm not greedy. But greed is a covetous heart. The heart wants to take love from others. Master Okawa says, nearly all the people who live by taking love will go to hell. Yes, actually jealousy is also categorized as greed. Even though it may sound strange, jealousy is the mind that comes from wanting something without making the proper efforts for it. Basically, wanting something you don't deserve. So let's begin the reflective meditation. Before practicing the meditation, let us start with some short breathing exercises. Count one when you breathe in. Count two when you breathe out. Count up to 10 and come back down to one at your own pace. Okay, hopefully your mind is calm now. It's amazing how much we can calm our minds by taking deep breaths. So let's start from the first poison of the mind, greed. Please contemplate on the following questions. Do you have a mind that demands love? Do you have a mind that craves attention? Do you have a jealous mind? Let's end our contemplation. How was it, John? Did you discover something through this short reflective meditation? I found myself uh, reflecting on some times in my past where I had perhaps like, you know, just accomplished something in life and didn't feel happy with the acknowledgement or response I had received from people around me. and. It's interesting because I think sometimes those feelings can endure in you and that's kind of what I was seeing in myself. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's very interesting that jealousy is a form of greed too. I feel like this world, there's so much jealousy roaming around with like social media and things like that. So it's very easy to see the beautiful life but not the hard work that goes behind it. And we all kind of know that in the back of our minds, but we refuse to let it be a factor of their great success for some reason. But it's always a great reminder to know that, you know, nothing comes from like nowhere. There's so much effort. There's so much, not only just effort, but the state of mind is so important in attaining success and stuff. So yeah, it's like check your mind before becoming jealous (laughs) is what I thought or yeah or greedy it's like yeah very interesting that when you uh, you're greedy because you want something you don't deserve 
it's like, what makes you think you deserve that? Right. <laughs> or that someone else deserves it less than you. Yeah. Or, yeah. Mm-hmm. The second reflective meditation is about being mindful of anger. Since our feelings of anger are often obvious, this one might be a little easier to practice. Do you get angry easily? If so, think about why you get angry so easily. Do you have resentment towards someone? Do you hate or have a grudge towards someone or something? Let's end our contemplation. How was it? How about you, Hannah? Yeah, anger is a big one. I remember being called a Tasmanian devil as a child. (laughs) (laughs) I had major anger issues, and I come from a home of three daughters, and it was just always kind of chaos, but I was always angry, and I felt like, wow, I really need to work on that. I didn't really know why I was so angry for so long, And I think I'm still working on it, but I think it comes from not having control in my case. Like there's a lot of loose ends everywhere and I just wanted everything to be perfect and just to make sense. And I didn't have that control. It really stressed me out. So I was always on the edge and took it out on my parents or my mom and my sisters. So I remember my friend telling me, you're so angry, you should really use that energy and put it into something good. Mm. And that kind of struck me. I'm like, whoa, didn't know you could do that. That's kind of cool. So that's when I kind of took a step back and wanted to do something about this anger that it was like wasting my life, kind of. I was so young, but still it was like a wasteful space in your mind, anger. Yeah, I can honestly say I... Pretty similar for me. Yeah. Was, yeah. You know, a lot of anger when I was younger. Oh, really? And then, You're so calm. Now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's, well, I have my moments. I mean, I think we all do. You know, it's, that's why it's. Are you a Virgo too? I'm a Scorpio. Oh, okay. Okay. You know, we're Scorpio. known for being a little <laughs> hot tempered. <laughs> and, but, uh, but having good methods for sublimating the anger and mm. strategies for calming it really have made all the difference. Yeah. And breathing, right? Yeah. Yeah, you were saying earlier that um, breathing, you learned to breathe at 10 years old, and that helped you a lot. Yeah, uh, yeah. someone had told me, you know, giving me this, like, breathing exercise for relaxation. And at the time, as an angry 10-year-old, I was like, there's no way I'm doing that. (laughs) (laughs) But I had found, as I got older, that in moments where I'd become very angry or overwhelmed in any way, like, instinctively, I would uh, just go back to that. Mm. And I think, yeah, the more we can accustom ourselves to the idea i mean and ideally we could do it earlier in life but even if we can't it's never too late to implement that into our mind into our consciousness mm-hmm. and, and have that as what we fall back on yeah and it's also so important to be mindful of when you're being angry and don't let it like overcome you or take over it really does feel like this inner monster that unleashes so just leash it up and control just take it back it's hard though like in the moment it's like easier said than done but yeah, yeah that monster can be very convincing sometimes yeah very convincing very logical too <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah yeah and that's why we do a lot of breathing exercises before meditation 
it's very important like never under underestimate the power of deep breathing because it really oxidizes your mind and slows everything down and regulates and uh, it's a very important step before meditation because you can think more clearly and i think that's the idea behind breathing when you get angry too yeah all right let's move on to our last reflective meditation examining the mind of foolishness in the broader term foolishness is the mind of not knowing the truth in other words it is often called spiritual ignorance but as for individuals we could say that foolishness is the mind of not knowing the laws of cause and effect and it often manifests as complaints or complaining so let us begin our meditation Do you blame others for your misfortune? Do you have a tendency to blame your environment for things that are not going in your favor? Let's end our contemplation. How was it? How about you, John? I think this was really an interesting one. There's, you know, I think there's a difference between blaming our environment and understanding our environment so we can adapt to it. And Mm -hmm. uh, I think that in the world right now, there really is a high propensity for people to blame environmental circumstances for any uh, shortcomings they may have. And I think that the only way we can ever hope to overcome that is through adapting. Mm. And in order to adapt, we have to essentially become less foolish about the situations mm-hmm. that we're in. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it's, it's a very nuanced, complex thing in the world today, which kind of, I think the messages we're getting a lot in the media are more about blaming everybody for everything instead of, mm-hmm. uh, <laughs> which, you know, of course, that's just taking us away from ourselves, though, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, the lack of self-responsibility also, I think, is foolish when you um, decide to not be responsible for anything is um, a very loose way of living. (laughs) It's a very um, foolish way of living because then, yeah, you just set yourself up to blame everything and everyone and you just complain and like, oh, it's because of this, because of that. And... Yeah, I remember someone telling me, I'm not complaining, I'm stating the obvious. It's like, wow. Yeah, mm. but I could. it was an excuse, basically. Right. So, yeah, it's, it's hard to detect this in you, in yourself, but we really have to put a big antenna up for this. It's not easy to detect in yourself, and neither is greed mm. earlier, too. You, you always think, oh, that you can see greed in others very easily, but it's very hard to see it in yourself so in other words self-awareness is so important and the whole point of meditation and reflection yeah self-awareness uh, is something we all really do have access to and mm-hmm. it's even anger like we know it's there but it can as you said before it can be such a logical uh monster that it can convince us that it's totally justified yeah and And there is justifiable anger right like that's what master does talk about when it's something to fight for what's right or justice but again that's like you really have to (laughs) understand what you're angry about right so yeah yeah overcoming you know the foolishness is really a challenging i think lifelong process Mm mm-hmm yeah, you will never know everything. And I think we have to be aware of that and not necessarily content, but just be aware that you don't know everything. 
Master Okawa says that the remedy for greed is to know how to be content. In other words, generate the mind of gratitude by counting your blessings. And the remedy for anger is to attain serenity within and generate the mind of mercy, knowing that we are all equal as children of Buddha or God by sharing the same Buddha nature or divine nature within. And the remedy for foolishness is to study the truth. Knowledge is what sets us free. By reading Master Akawa's books and understanding the laws of cause and effect and the laws of the mind, this really helps us to overcome our negative mindsets and shift our way of living to a more constructive and positive way of life. Yes, and with that said, we truly recommend you to read The Laws of Hell and educate your soul. That's it for today. Thank you for listening. The Laws of Hell is available at Amazon, Barnes & Noble, and other bookstores. For more information, visit okawabooks.com. Until next time, thank you. Thank you.